There's a new function and operator in Excel 365 which has just been made generally available. The function is trim range and the operator is the trim references operator. Now I'm not going to lie, the first time I saw these I was a bit meh, I didn't really care. But since their release into the beta channel I have seen some really amazing use cases. So in this video we'll start with the basics and then look at two scenarios where they could be really useful. So if you're ready, let's get started. Let's start with the basics. Here is my scenario. I have a range of cells, which includes the date, item and units. And from that, I want to add the price column and also a total value. Because from that, we want to calculate the average transaction value. Now, I don't want to update the formula for each new record. So we want to apply the formula to our entire range. Let's start in cell E6. We want to look up the price based on the item name. So I'll type equals X lookup, opening bracket. Our lookup value will be the range from C6 to C21. Next, we have our lookup array, and we want to look up that value from cells H6 to H9. And then finally, for the return array, we want to return the values from I6 to I9, and then close that bracket. When that calculates, we get the values for all the valid cells and we get hash NA for all the other cells. Now, clearly this is not ideal and there are other options we could use to fix this. But in this example, we're going to use the new trim range function. Trim range removes leading or trailing blank cells from a range or array. So for the lookup value, we are going to wrap that inside the trim range function. This function has three arguments, the range, and then two optional arguments for row trim mode and col trim mode. Our range will be the cells from C6 to C21. For the next argument of row trim mode, we can see there are four options, none, leading, trailing, and both. And this option determines which cells are trimmed for each row. If we look at the next argument of col trim mode, you will see we have exactly the same options for trimming columns. Now for our scenario, we have data in our first row and we're only looking at a single column. Therefore, we can use the default option of both, which means we only need to provide the range. Then we can close the bracket and calculate. And this now only calculates for the populated values. Now just be aware that if we enter a value further down in column C, that it will calculate for the rows in between. It trims the leading and trailing blanks, but not the blanks from the middle of a range. So that's the trim range function. Now let's look at the trim references operator. It performs the same task as trim range, but without a function. So let's use this to calculate our total value, which will be units multiplied by price. In cell F6, I will type equals and then select D6 to D21. And I want to multiply that by E6 to E21. When I hit return, it calculates all the values, leaving the zeros for any empty rows. Now we might think that's okay, we can work with that, but we can't because the average calculation is including all of those zero cells. Our average should be 66.25. Unfortunately, it's displaying as 20.7. So let's edit our formula. We could use the trim range function on our range references, or the alternative is to use the new trim references operator. To remove leading blank cells, we can place a dot before the colon, or to remove trailing blank cells, we can enter a dot after the colon. We have data in our first row, and we always will. So in this scenario, it doesn't matter about leading blanks, but we definitely want to remove trailing blanks. Therefore, I'm going to add a dot after the colon. Now, what about the range from E6 to E21? Well, we've already calculated a spill range for that. Therefore, rather than referencing E6 to E21, we can just reference E6 hash. And when we calculate that, we now get the correct values. And if we insert a new value, 
for the 3rd of April 2025 for the Delta product and with 10 units, everything updates correctly. You're probably thinking, why not just use a table? And I agree with you. That's why I really didn't see the point initially. Though I will say tables are great for holding data, but they're not great for user input. So there probably was a use case all along, but it was when I saw the next example that I really saw the benefit of these new features. The first example we're going to look at is combining data across multiple sheets. This method was shared with me by Jose Antonio Morato. So I can't claim it was my idea. And initially when he shared it with me, I doubted it would even work, but it does. So let's suggest that we have four worksheets. We have a sheet for Q1, a sheet for Q2, a sheet for Q3 and a sheet for Q4. And we want to stack the values together into a single array of values. We also have a start sheet, which is blank, and also an end sheet, which is also blank. To combine the values for all the sheets between the start sheet and the end sheet, we can type equals vstack opening bracket. Now vstack is a 3D function. That means it works across sheets. So I'll select the start sheet, hold shift, and select the end sheet. Then I'm going to select the range from B6 to F21, which is the range of cells which our data can populate on each of our individual sheets. When we close that bracket and calculate, it gives us all the values from all of those sheets. Unfortunately, those sheets contain blank rows. What we're going to do is to wrap this inside the sort function. At the start, I will add sort, opening bracket, and then a bracket at the end. That now sorts all of that combined data. And you'll notice that all of those blank cells have now been moved to the bottom, which means if we go back and edit our formula, at the start, we can add the trim range function and an opening bracket, and then we can add a closing bracket at the end. When that calculates, we now only get the values that are contained on each of those individual Q1 to Q4 sheets. Now, I think that that is a pretty nice use case for the trim range function. So that's our first example. Now let's go and take a look at another example. Using these new features, we can bring pivot tables into the calculation chain, which means we're no longer restricted by the get pivot data function. In fact, using these features with pivot tables opens up a whole new world of possibilities. Here on my worksheet, I have created a pivot table using our data. Now let's suggest that I want to use this pivot table in a subsequent calculation. I'll come across to a new worksheet and in cell B3, I'm going to type equals and then I'm going to go to my pivot table worksheet and select columns H and I. Now we definitely don't want a full column reference. Therefore, we're going to use our trim refs operators. We will add a dot before the colon to remove the leading blank cells and a dot after the colon to remove the trailing blank cells. Now when that calculates, we only return the values which our pivot table occupies. If I go back to my pivot table sheet, click insert and go to slicer, I can then create a slicer for my item column. I'll check that and click OK. That now creates my slicer. I'll press Ctrl X to cut the slicer and then Ctrl V to paste it onto my calculation worksheet. Now, as I select the items in my slicer, my formula updates and only shows the items which are displayed in that pivot table. But we could now go further and combine multiple pivot tables into a single result. We can also perform additional calculations on the result of that pivot table. So these new functions give us new ways of solving problems inside Excel. While this new function and operator are generally available, it doesn't mean that you have them yet, but it does mean that if you have Excel 365, you will get them at your next update cycle. So if you don't have them yet, they are coming. But while you wait, why not watch this video next? It's got lots more great Excel techniques. So thanks for watching. And I'll catch you next time.